Good morning. It's August 16th, 2020, and today we're going to do a product review of the Rockford's ZY001 Continuous Mouse Trap. And by continuous, they mean that it can be, it can capture more than one. Um, and uh, it's also a humane mouse trap. It doesn't hurt the mouse in any way, other than uh, make them feel real stupid that they got caught. So in any event, um, We'll take a look at that in, in, uh, in different levels as we go. Uh, it's from China. It costs a little bit less than 30 bucks. And you'll see the description below on how you can get one. And the dimensions are it's 12.4 inches long slash deep by 9.545 inches wide by 5.9 inches high. And it weighs about a little less than 2 pounds. And again, this is the Rockbird's Continuous Mousetrap ZY001. So um, today what we're going to do is look at the instructions. There we go. So the first part is that there's a little lever inside. And we can, I'll show you that. You open up this little gate here and Inside there, there's this little lever, and on the um, on the other side over here, you can see where it catches. So the basic idea is that you put bait on the little um, extension there, and then the mouse comes around the corner, and then comes in and, and bumps it, and because it's so It's just barely holding it. See that little uh, under the metal part where it wouldn't take much to, to move it. And then all of a sudden it would, um, it would spring. So um, that's the idea. So we're gonna bait it with uh, grapefruit pieces. And um, one of the things that I did before I, I, when I caught, I guess the female was that I used honey oats. And I, I sprinkled a few around the front so it got used to eating them without any danger. Then I started sprinkling them way in the back. Then I started putting them so that they would be right around the corner. And then it would come and go, oh, look at that, there's more there. And it would trigger that little metal thing. And let's go ahead and trigger that and I'll show you what happens. So all of a sudden, boom, it closes like that. And there's no way that the uh, mouse can get out. Now in the paperwork here, it says it's a continuous mouse trap. So some second mouse is supposed to be pretty darn dumb to come along after the first mouse is caught and go in there and um, try to get some, some food. So I don't know about the continuous part, but theoretically that's how it's supposed to work. But in, in the original picture here, since I'm plant-based, I don't use sausages, but they <laughs> they put like a little Vienna, Vienna sausage there. And there's also this section here where you put food in this little front area so that it can it teases it so that it wants to go in and around the corner. And once again, that's what happens. It's there's a little latch, and then there's the picture of it. But I can show you that when I I set the bait. And then of course there's a handle because once you catch it, you really don't want to be too close to where it's spitting. You want to be able to carry it away. And then I've got a newspaper that I'm going to put over it so that it'll be in the shade. And so after it's caught, it won't be uh, in distress, or at least too much. So that's the idea. And then they recommend here, what are the baits? Well, they got nuts, pieces of corn, apples, beef and sausage and peanut butter, apparently are, are pretty popular. But um, I'm gonna use grapefruit because I know it likes grapefruit. 
Okay, so uh, now we're going to go ahead and bait it. And um, if I was the manufacturer, uh, just as a tip, I would put something in the design to make it really easy to lock open the um, front because it doesn't take much for that little um, catch device to um, slip and then suddenly you're missing your bait. So one of the things that we want to do and so what I did is I jammed a clothespin to keep the door open and then over here I just got one of those little ties to uh, keep the front open. But if I was the manufacturer, I'd make that a little easier so that people could, you know, um, brace the door open. So what we want to basically do is um, put something um, on this right here, the uh, little metal piece. And so that will be like a grapefruit, a piece of grapefruit. And we will go ahead and stick that on there. There we go. So now that it's on there, there we go. So then it's a matter of placement. Okay, so we verify that the door is still open. We'll put on a newspaper to keep it out of the sun. And give it the, uh, hold that newspaper down with the Moringa pod. See, look at that. So it's a couple days later, and I took a peek this morning when I was watering, and I found out that uh, we got something in there. So we're going to take it to the park, and we got to buy the handle so that it's nice and safe. So let's first take a look and see what we've got. Well, it doesn't look like we need to take it to the park because it's not living. So I didn't do anything to kill it, unless it does it overate the grapefruit. But it's not even living. See it in there? So, oh, it's got ants on it. So, let's go ahead and throw that away. We're going to use some honey o's. So, what I'm going to do, this is our, this bait worked before. So, so far we've worked with the grapefruit and we've worked with uh, the honey o's and we cut mice, a mouse or a rodent with each one. So. And in between I've hosed the heck out of this so it's not as not as funky as it looks.
make it. And then what I'm going to do is take some of these and just put them in there. And put it right underneath that. And then with a bunch of these other ones, I'm going to keep them in my hand. And once it's down, all right, so we can let go of this now. This was another contrived piece of wire. And then we close. Let's try a new place. And I'm going to put some paper over it so that once it does get caught, that the sun will not be so bothersome. All right, that'll do. So maybe we'll have some better luck with the honey hose. They worked well before. All right, here we are in my kitchen. And uh, what we're gonna do is, I did. I had some good luck with the grapefruit, and then I also had some good luck with the, um, uh, the honey oats, but uh, not so much with the um, Slim Jims, which is probably good since I'm plant-based. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take an Ezekiel end piece and I'm going to cut it into thirds. And, there, and so one of them, I'm going to put a hole in it. The one of the good thing about it being the end piece is that it will be tougher than the, um, the other ones. Now I could toast it, probably wouldn't be a bad idea. But what I need to do is be able to hang this from that little um, wire thing. So it needs like a little hole to do that. I think I'm gonna forego, um, I don't even think I need to toast it. But you see what I'm gonna do? I got a hole there. So that'll go on the little end piece. And so when the mouse pull, uh, goes for the peanut butter, it'll end up pulling on this. And these other ones are teasers. So um, I'm gonna end up putting one in the front door to get them a little bit spoiled. It's kind of like in the stock market where the, the market makers try to tease the, the shareholders, the, the new buyers, and they give them easy, quick gains. And then further along the line, they make them go down around the corner and, and get a little bit more committed, like buying at a pricier price. And then all of a sudden when they have a lot of people really overextended, like they have, they have margin accounts where they're, um, I wanna make sure this doesn't drip. I don't wanna mess in the cage, even though I do clean it every time, but, um, so then they get them to overcommit, and then the, 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 the floor drops out on them. So I'll put one way in the back so that it will round the corner. And I'll put one right here in the front. Easy, those are the quick, easy gains. So the mouse can get to really like the peanut butter. And so gingerly, I will need to undo this secure device that I set up. The manufacturer should have a way to uh, set this up without having to jerry rig uh, And then you pull that together like that. 
these come out pretty easy, but then they go back in easy. So that's all ready to go. And hopefully we will move this to where it needs to be. But I'm totally like peanut butter. But there was one, a really big rodent. I think I'll put this one just right here. All right, let's go check the trap. Well, from here you can see that the front door of it is closed. That's what it looks like when it's closed. And inside we have Mr. Mouse. Let's see how close we can get there. And I already checked earlier, so I put some water in the little saucer. So, the next step will be to bring, bring that out to the desert. And we'll do that later. All right. So here's Mr. Mouse. And I gave it some water. And it's a big one. It's probably wondering what its fate is. I gave it a little bit of water, and then it turned over the... Um... So what I'm doing here is I'm going to put it in here just to make it sanitary. So, this is the third mouse, and there's the stick I'm going to use to open the door. I would hate to have it just jump up on me. Alright, so we'll move Mr. Mousetrap out. And there it is. One last look at Mr. Mouse there. Hope you can see that. There he is. So, then we'll go ahead and push the door open. and try to encourage it.
And there it goes. Off into the wild blue. So that was a success. What I was saying earlier was that a few decades ago they had a thing called the hantavirus and it was killing lots of people. And they didn't know what it was. And they asked the Indians, or the Indians said, hey, we've seen this before over many, many decades. About every 40 years, it rains so much that um, it rains so much that the mice population grows like crazy because of all of the grass. And because the uh, you don't see it that often, people forget it. But that what happens is the mice get into places where they shouldn't, like the uh, like storage sheds and things like that. And um, it ends up killing people. So they would end up getting into places that were like uh, places um, into mobile homes, RVs, into the insulation, and people would go in there and they would breathe and then they would die. And so the Indians told them what the story was. But if you have mice, rodents around the place, you really need to get rid of them because if it ever turns out to be where it's like the hantavirus, where they start to come indoors during the winter, then you've got a problem because uh, those buggers can kill you. So it's one thing not to have them in the garden, but it's um, another thing to keep them totally out of your house. So that's the story, and uh, hopefully this little rodent will have a place to live. And if not, it will be food for owls or coyotes. But it might meet the other one that I put out here already. So we've got one more to go. All right, here we are again. I've got the, we're going to set up a new uh, bait arrangement here. Today, this And this one, I've got one more big mouse rodent rat that I need to get out of the yard. And I do it, need to do it soon so that it might be able to find its friend out in the desert when I bring it out there. So I just got one of these coat hangers to keep that door open. For now. I really do think the manufacturer could come up with a better way. So what we're going to do is we're going to hang this baby on here. I got a safety pin with marshmallows and it's just going to hang there. I've got a little water thing there so that once it gets caught, matter of fact I think I'll add some water right now. Give it some bird water. I always keep these five gallon buckets available so that the uh, chlorine uh, evaporates. It also gives the bird something to drink during the day. So we'll put that in there. So remember the scheme. This is like the stock market where people get trapped in one stock. So we caught them with honey oats, um, grapefruit, the Slim Jims were a bust. Those didn't do anything. The peanut butter with Ezekiel bread, <clears throat> Ezekiel bread they liked a lot. That caught the real big one. So today I'm gonna to try to do the marshmallows. So the trick is, is that you put some way in the back. You want it to round the corner. So we'll uh, tilt that so you can see it. Put that way in the back, just around the corner so that they see the, the one that's hanging. And then we'll put some in the front, the easy, easy winnings. And hopefully the, uh, the rodent isn't diabetic, but these are pretty good. I bought 
for like 99 cents. I got like a big bag of them. It's on there. Pretty close. See that right there, the little metal thing holding it up? So now we'll go ahead and move the trap into place. And hopefully we won't shake it before I have to reset it. All right, nice and gingerly. Make sure that front door is closed. Pick it up. So the, the, the idea with the different types of baits is that when someone in the stock market gets screwed on one, a particular stock, they're they don't want to get they don't want to be involved with it again. But then along comes a new shiny object, a different stock that looks like a sure win. But then they go after that, and of course. The, the market makers make it so that there's some initial wins. Stock goes up, buy more. So that's the idea of what's in front here. Okay, looking good. Still baited, got water. Make sure the whoop, make sure the front door closes. There we go. Bait, yep, I think that's all good. So the mouse will enjoy those ones in the front and then they'll get a little more committed to the ones in the back and they'll round the corner and see the ones hanging. It'll eat and when it tries those, it'll let go of that door that closes in the front and they'll be trapped and they'll have a little water in there. So that one's all set probably take a couple days but uh, you remember that big rodent that I let off in the uh, desert so this other one's the same size but that's the goal a new type of bait so let's see how that works all right <clears throat> we have um, Come to the end of our video with the last uh, success. This one was one one with the marshmallows. I came out here this morning and I saw our little friend. Hey guy. Move the, uh, I give it some water. So now it's to get it to the uh, park, desert park. And hopefully I can do that without getting ants all over my car. But what I'm gonna do is I've got this box, and I've got this bag. And we'll go ahead and load her up. And then drive her out there. It wants to find a way out. How strange is that? And all of these ants I'm not sure what their deal is, but I really don't want those in my car. So we're gonna have to seal that up as good as we can. There's enough on oxygen in there for the mouse to breathe for 10 minutes. And we got the trusty stick there. All right. 
As you can see, this is pretty far out. And uh, there's the, the uh, rodent will have a chance to. Boy, look at all these cars. Well, geez Louise. So I'm going to go park where I'm not supposed to park, horse trailer parking only, but it'll only be a matter of a few minutes. Except, of course, if you're that guy, Mr. Park Ranger. I don't know what he's doing over there, but he's certainly cramping my style. So, I might have to find an adjacent area. Mr. Park Ranger being a pain. But you can see birds, whales, and such. There's a nice little shady area. Okay. So let's go ahead and set this up. Mr. Mouse. 